G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, sad day morning here in Australia. Market is back to $2.7 trillion. So we had we have had a move. Is that because all the options ended sort of yesterday, sort of slash today, stateside time? Well, it looks like that could be it because the market has definitely moved quite nicely. <coughs> Excuse me. Bitcoin up to 62,000, Ethereum almost 4,400, was a little bit higher, has come back a little bit. So at a new all-time high, things are looking quite nice. Again, there's always movement at the end of every month, that last Friday of every month, that's when the options expire. And, you know, some people say it's not real and other people say it is, I believe it is. There's at least some kind of movement. It's not always a big drastic fall, but it's generally there's a retracement right before those options end and then the market starts to move up, at least in a bull market where, there we go, we can see Ethereum just hit 4,400. In a bear market, we'll have to wait and see whether that is the same, you know. Again, I spoke about this the other day, is what we've sort of been through in the last six months, is that the new bear market, or are we still yet to see, you know, a true bear market that lasts, you know, a year, and then you see a lot of coins losing, you know, 80 to 90 percent i mean we saw a lot of coins lose about 80 70 to 80 percent uh, a lot of the altcoins anyway through that last kind of bearish trend that we went through so we'll have to wait and see how things play out because the truth is no one really knows it's always a guess and i definitely am never going to offer you financial advice it's always just going to be my personal opinion all right, so again, 2.7 trillion, nice. Bitcoin dominance dropping again ever so slightly, just under 44% now. Bitcoin at 62,000 and gas prices are super high. People are just, you know, you go on Uniswap, it's about $200 to do a basic swap on Uniswap at the moment. And again, people jumping in and out of stable coins and swapping between coins. It's just, yeah, Ethereum prices super high at the moment. <coughs> Excuse me croaky throat all right but look the market's up three point or 2.9 percent so quite nice so we got generally green across the board and shiba inu just will not stop at the moment unbelievable um you know <laughs> someone said that someone put eight thousand dollars into shiba inu last year they're still holding it don't know who this person is but eight thousand into shiba inu it's now worth something like six billion dollars i mean good lord you know, I could have and I just didn't. I mean, I was never going to put $8,000 into Shiba Inu, but that's a learning experience. Maybe someday in the future, you know, hard to have $8,000 just lying around, let alone to put it into uh, some kind of meme coin. But, you know, there's people that have done it and that's transformative money. I can tell you right now, if I had $6 billion worth of Shiba Inu, I would cash out at least one to two billion of it. <laughs> and then I'd just let the rest ride, you know. From $8,000 to six billion, that is unbelievable. You can only hope that, well, apparently, uh, what I heard is that person's still adding to their Shiba Inu. So, yeah, I mean, I would have taken some major profits, but, you know, good luck to that person anyway, or entity, you know, whoever it is, they are truly doing quite well i don't think there's been any gains as good but anyway moving on we can see green across the board but there's a few things down doge down a little bit uh so what's been the best mover in the top 100 in the last 24 hours all right there we go mana oh man people getting right into that metaverse that's likely to do with the news of facebook uh turning to meta uh, that's their new name. So Facebook's going away. Safe Moon, oh God, 35%. I don't know what's going on there and who's involved in Safe Moon. Again, I don't want to bash it because I don't personally know for a fact, but I've just heard a lot of bad stuff about it. So that's why I haven't touched it. But, you know, look, some people are probably going to make some money in it. I just hope that it's not the scam that people are talking about. Axie Infinity moving again. Shiba's right up there. Chili's. Theta, Theta Fuel, we got some nice movers right across the board. And again, is that because the options ended on Friday? Uh, and yeah, was that the cause for the bit of a dump and now the pump after it? You know, will we ever know for certain? I don't know, but at least face value what we're seeing. It definitely looks like that was the case. And again, the, the for, for months on end now, every that final Friday of the month, we have something similar happen like this. Unless we're in a bearish kind of trend, it's a different story. But if we're bullish, right before that Friday ends, yep, we see a bit of a dip, 
And then once the Friday's over, then the prices start to move up. So that is the pattern at the moment. That doesn't mean it lasts forever, but that's definitely what I've been seeing. So great moves, lots of double digit moves and plenty, uh, well not plenty, but at least a number of high single digit moves. What about the other side though? What about losses in the top 100? What hasn't performed so well? All right, well there we can see uh, Xfin Network down a little bit, Akomi, Nexo, Doge, Aave, one Matic having a little bit of a pullback, but still $2 for Matic is quite nice. And again, most of these are coins that were pumping just the other day, like Curve had a massive pump. So of course they're gonna have a little bit of retracement. Nothing just simply goes up forever. There's always ups and downs. It's that ebbs and flows, but the losses are very minimal. The highest loss in the top 100 is 5%. Uh, and again, we saw the gains, they were quite nice. So let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So I did say I was looking for this to maybe come down and touch here, and gee, we got pretty close. Look at that wick. I mean, they, they managed to push it down to 56,000. Imagine you had a buy order in there. 56,000, sort of 300. 56,290 would have been perfect. <laughs> you would have just picked it up. But again, look, it pushed straight up. And again, now we are starting to see the end of the options. And again, it's getting towards the end of the day over there. So that's uh, Friday evening for them, Saturday morning here. And it does look like it's starting to push up. So is Bitcoin going to get ready to come up and retest these new all-time highs sometime soon? Again, 66,000. But really, you know, let's go to the wick. About, let's say, 60, sort of 7,000. Yeah, 67,000. Can we get to that $70,000 mark next week? It's not... It's not out of the realms at all. It's quite easy, actually. Uh, it's just sort of when it will happen. But I would say we're probably going to go 70. I reckon we're going to get up to around $72,000, dollars sometime next week. That's my gut feeling. Not financial advice. I never give you that. We'll have to wait and see. But look, the number that I'm really looking for is 80000 I just I get the feeling like it's going to be really hard to break and again everyone's trying not everyone but a lot of people are going to try and front run you know the hundred thousand that everyone think there's going to be a big retracement from so it could come before for me I bought Bitcoin a long time ago I still you know dollar cost average in but I bought the bulk of my Bitcoin you know back at sort of eight thousand dollars so I just I'm not selling I don't, I don't need to I don't think Bitcoin's ever going to get back down to eight thousand dollars again so I'm unlikely to lose money in Bitcoin and everything that's happening with it I just get the feeling like it's you know the long-term play so don't get me wrong once it breaks above this kind of sixty seven thousand dollar level even really where it is I mean it's kind of a price discovery now ish uh, I'm not dollar cost averaging as much into Bitcoin. I am waiting for dips. So I'm putting more into cash at the moment. Still dollar cost averaging into things, but because just about everything's at all time highs, majority uh, is just staying in cash. I'm waiting to buy the dips uh, rather than again, going all in on these coins. But this can be considered a breakout trade, but I've, I've moved off topic a little bit at the moment. I really think 80,000 is gonna be a hard barrier. And if we do get through 80,000, you know, without too much, uh, trouble i really think once we sort of get it's you know it's a cricket term the nervous 90s i definitely think there's going to be all sorts of stuff happening at ninety thousand. but look i could be wrong we could just you know completely cruise through this but a lot of people you know all over twitter and uh youtube and things like that are all saying yeah 100k uh, is you know where they're going to start taking profits. I can tell you it'll be done before 100k. Not too many people are going to wait for 100k exactly. And again, for me, I'm not really looking. You know, I may and it's a big may take some profits around sort of 100,000 if it gets there. But if it doesn't and we go into a bear market, I, I really don't care. Again, I think you know it'd be unlikely that Bitcoin makes it back down to sort of eight thousand dollars. Uh, again, unless there's some kind of black swan event, that's a different story. So for me, I don't think I'll sell my Bitcoin. Uh, again, I'll be putting a whole lot of cash on the side waiting for the dips. And again, if the market really starts to take a dip at that $100,000 mark for Bitcoin, then I'll just be holding a whole lot of cash on the side. I won't be dollar cost averaging in uh, down if it starts to go down from 100 until Bitcoin probably gets to, you know, between 80 to sort of 50,000. That's where I'll start to look. But again, just start to look. It'll depend on what's happening on the market. But yeah, 80,000, it's a very interesting level. 
and then anywhere from eighty to a hundred thousand, I would be expecting a severe, not a severe, but a big correction, just because everyone's trying to front run that. But again, we'll have to wait and see whether that's the true bear market, or if it plays out like a lot of people are thinking that maybe this becomes a much more extended cycle, because a lot of people are thinking a hundred thousand, you know, before December. Um, yeah, again, look, there's the 13th of December. Uh, and again, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm, you know, getting a little bit uh, too far ahead of myself at the moment. But I, again, I just get the feeling like 80,000 is going to be a hard mark. All right, a couple of stories I want to have a look at. Total value locked in cross-chain DeFi bridges exceeds $22 billion, jumping 48% in the last 30 days. Is DeFi coming back? Are we getting ready for another DeFi surge? I definitely think we might be. So we go across here. Total value locked uh, hovers above 240 billion. So that's in Avalanche, Phantom, Polygon, Trom, Arbitrum, and other kind of DeFi's out there. I think DeFi, the next kind of DeFi summer, you know, well, it's going to be a DeFi uh, summer here in Australia, different uh, in other places around the world, but I get the feeling like DeFi is starting to ramp up again. And that's what you need to kind of look at. What looks like it's bubbling and getting ready. You know, you can chase the things that are pumping. That's, you know, one way to do it. I don't really like it too much. But if some sector's kind of pumping, I'm probably already starting to look for something that's bottoming out because I want to stay ahead of it because that's where I'm going to make the bigger exponential gains. Excuse me. Something that's already basically bottomed out as opposed to something that's already started to pump. I really wanted to get in before it started to pump unless you're getting in before it's the pumping part and it's just starting to move and hopefully again you guess right and then you can sort of front run because front running is where it's at you want to not so much front running but you want to be ahead of the curve you don't want to be chasing the curve it's not that you can't make good money sort of chasing the curve you can but you got to be careful get in and take profits and all the rest of it but again look for something that's been super quiet for a while and again still do your research and DeFi has been pretty quiet for a while. It's been hardly doing anything since that big sort of pump. I think it was around August, uh, June to August last year. I mean, that was DeFi just went crazy. Is it gearing up to do the same thing again? I get the feeling like it might be with numbers like that. All right, Kazakhstan. So we know a lot of Bitcoin miners, when they got kicked out of China, moved to Kazakhstan. They're expecting 1.5 billion dollars from crypto mining in the next five years that is uh good for the people of kazakhstan uh well hopefully you know some of them will get employed from it hopefully some of that money goes to kazakhstan and things like that but that's a lot of money that has now moved out of china and you know there are rumors that china is now trying to open up crypto mining uh, again and get some of those people to come back but that's just a rumor we haven't really seen anything that suggests that's actual fact just yet uh, and, you know, there were some people saying that China's maybe even, you know, talking to its citizens about whether they want Bitcoin. Again, that's been more a rumor than uh, anything that's been confirmed, but we'll have to wait and see. But again, this is why I believe crypto is the place to be. Could we go through another really brutal bear market? Absolutely. Depending how crazy, you know, cryptocurrency gets over the next kind of few months. And now, again, Data Dash has said that he believes this could push out till, you know, anywhere from sort of June next year to, you know, November next year. So that's 22 before we see the peak of the bull market. A lot of people are still like, nah, in the next couple of months, this is happening basically November and December, maybe January going to be crazy. And then it's going to have this big sell off. We'll have to wait and see. But again, I just think, yeah, there's not a better bet in my personal opinion, never financial advice than crypto in the sort of medium in the next sort of five to ten years at least the corrections will be brutal if you can handle them uh then you'll probably do all right if you're on if you're in good projects if you can't then you'll probably panic and sell at a loss and you won't come back but you just you're not going to find these kind of gains on the stock market or at least they're not going to be sort of as obvious and just all around they're going to be really hard to pick in the stock market but in crypto it is a little bit like shooting fish in a barrel if you can get in at the right time not sure if now's exactly the right time, but it's not the worst time. And the worst time is right at the peak, and we're not at the peak yet. You know, none of the on-chain data suggests we're there just yet. 
All right, Mark Cuban and uh, Voyager Digital. We know they were teaming up. Look, Voyager Digital also got some investment from Alameda Research. We've spoke about both of those. But now they've teamed up uh, with the Dallas Mavericks and they're actually giving away BTC. Well, the Dallas Mavericks are giving away BTC. So them and Voyager Digital have partnered to take the crypto into the mainstream. And now the NBA team is giving away $100 in Bitcoin. But there's a bit of a catch. There always is, but it's not too bad. So the team will give away $100 in Bitcoin to anyone who downloads the app of the cryptocurrency platform, Voyager Digital. Now, you must download the app before Saturday. Uh, so Saturday, you still got about sort of 24 hours stateside time. Now, you also need to enter the promo code MAVS100 and deposit $100 and make one trade uh, make a trade on the platform. So $100 worth of BTC. Uh, if you are looking at you know, joining up with Voyager Digital, that's a pretty good reason to. Now this is only people for people in America. I don't think Voyager Digital have opened up to the rest of the world. I know Europe is coming uh, and then I know they're going to the rest of the world, but they haven't quite got there yet. But look, $100 worth of free Bitcoin is not too bad. Uh, and you know, you do need to deposit $100, but look, they are matching that $100. And if Bitcoin, you know, doubles or triples in the next kind of few weeks uh, to month or so, then that seems pretty good. But again, be careful. There's no guarantees Bitcoin will do that. Last but not least, Australian Securities Regulator issues guidelines for crypto ETPs. This is nice. Uh, and EF, uh, ETFs and things like that. I'm so glad Australia is getting on the front foot and we're getting some positive crypto regulation. We want to be at the forefront of this. We don't want to be on the back seat and completely reactive. We want to be proactive. Get in front. Australia, you know, we're in the G20, so we're not one of the smallest nations, but I think we're underrepresented for the kind of country we have in the, uh, yeah, the fundamentals that we believe in and the kind of lifestyle and you know policies that we have we should be higher up in world politics and we need things like this to help us get there so the australian securities and investments commission or the acic asic sorry has issued its response to public consultation this is what i like they came to the public uh, they went to businesses and things like that and asked for their opinions they didn't just make decisions based on what the government wants they got out there and spoke to people because I think the Australian government were honest with themselves and said, look, we really don't know a whole lot about crypto. I'm not saying they didn't know anything, but let's get out there and see what the country wants and get some advice from people that are in the space uh, and understand. So public consultation, love it. On cryptocurrency exchange traded products, so ETPs, alongside fresh industry guidance. So again, they went and spoke to people who are actually within cryptocurrencies. Again, understood it, have been in the space for years. They're not just trying to, again, you know, something similar to the US, something like, not similar, what the US are doing, trying to fit crypto into old regulations and old spaces. That just doesn't work. This is a new transformative space. We need new rules and new governance around it. You can take some of the principles that have been used on old uh, regulations and that, but don't simply try to fit it in. So I love what Australia is doing here. And again, this makes me proud to be an Australian, one of the greatest places in the world. But everyone says that generally from the countries they're from, if they're in a pretty good country. Now, according to the official guidance, the ASIC has so far green-lighted ETPs based on major cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum and expects more crypto assets to become a foundation of ETPs in the future. Now, I think Australia has actually green-lit a... Bitcoin uh, ETF, but a spot Bitcoin ETF. I think one is coming very soon. So again, I love where Australia's at. Spot Bitcoin is what we want. We don't want these, you know, futures and all the rest of it. They're not really dealing in Bitcoin. We want to invest in the actual asset themselves, not the price of it. The price is great. Yes, when it goes up and down, that's good, but you don't own it. So yeah, it, that just seems silly to me. I'd rather own the actual asset itself. And then you can, again, if you, you know, own Bitcoin, you can then again use things like BlockFi and Celsius and all that kind of stuff, you know, and earn interest. If you just own the ETP, uh, sorry, the futures uh, ETF, all you can do is get the value of the price going up and down. You can't actually get the value of the asset itself. And now look, when you're investing in uh, Bitcoin uh, ETFs and things like that, you can't take that, a Bitcoin 
uh, simply away and then put it in Celsius and things like that. Some of them may allow that, but you'll have to check. But I just like the idea of owning the actual asset, not owning what the price might do. You know, synthetic sort, that's basically, you know, a futures is like a synthetic version of something. And they're fine and you can make great money with them. I'm not against synthetic versions of anything at all. But I'd rather own the actual asset than a synthetic asset of it. But don't get me wrong, like, I, I like what synthetics are about and the platform as well. We're talking about both in the same. Sometimes you can't own the physical asset for whatever. So that is the absolute reason why then you should have a synthetic asset. And again, sometimes it's just easier for people. They don't want to, you know, have to handle Bitcoin, don't understand it. And that's when, you know, maybe futures contracts and things like that would be beneficial. But I think in the future, most people will want to own the actual asset. That is where the true value comes from. All right, that's it from me. Again, we got the weekend here. <clears throat> Excuse me, still croaky voice. It looks like the <clears throat> options ending at the end of the month has played a part, and it looks like it's been doing it for a while. Again, that's in a bull market, in a bear market, not so much, but things are looking good. You know, 70,000, uh, 72 to 75,000, I would expect next week. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. I never offer you financial advice. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We should all be on that gang train. And I'll see you next time.